Okay, um, just concluded uh, our Thursday practice. Um, it was a good week. Our guys worked really hard, as I probably mentioned to you. We had an adjustment to our schedule yesterday where our guys had to come in uh, early after a, a late afternoon practice. I thought they did a great job of handling, um, you know, the schedule and, you know, being flexible with it. Um, look, they know what the, the, the situation is. They got to go on the road uh, in the SEC, and it's never easy. You know, whoever the opponent is, um, it's a great challenge. You're, you're going to go into a environment that is always difficult, regardless of who the opponent is, and you're going to get um, you're going to get a great challenge. So, uh, all those things uh, are part of it. Uh, but at the end of the day, you, you've got to execute at a high level in offense, defense, and special teams. And so to execute at a high level is you've got to have great habits in terms of how you've prepared. And I think our guys are doing a much better job of understanding that preparation is one thing, but now you've got to go play. And, and playing is, you know, the ability to execute at a high level and, and play your best when your best is needed. So um, – we're going to need that against a really good South Carolina team. So with that, we'll open up to questions. Hey, Brian. You said yesterday how Whit Weeks can't be in a platoon situation. So what does that mean for Harold Perkins moving forward? Um, look, they, they all have to play, right? I mean, so we have to be able to be creative with our defensive structure. And, um, you know, Blake understands that. And that's a good thing for us, right? I mean, you know, I, I think we understand that we've got some position flexibility. Um, you know, Witt's played some Mike Linebacker. Um, Harold's played Will. He's played some Sam. Um, so we've got great flexibility uh, with, with both those guys. So, um, you know, we just feel like, you know, it's important that the, the guys that are playing their best um, get on the field. And, so I think that that kind of addresses the comments that I made relative to, you know, keeping him on the field. Um, you know, of course, he's, he's not going to play every single play. But, um, you know, I think making sure that, um, you know, we have the position flexibility and the utilization of not being afraid to move people around to get your best players on the field. Hey, Coach. Yeah. Uh, just curious, you know, when Zai was out and he was injured, what were you missing in that cornerback room without him? And now that he's back, what are you gaining? Well, certainly experience, right? I mean, he was an experienced player who was really ascending uh, when he got hurt. Um, he is, um, you know, I would say one thing, extremely coachable. He does what he's asked to do. Um, he's physically stronger um, than, than the younger players he's obviously a mature player. He's played a lot of football. And uh, I'd say more than anything else, just had a lot more snaps and was beginning to have a lot of success. And so confidence uh, would be the other thing that he brought to that room. Um, but let's, let's be careful now. I mean, he's coming off an ACL. Um, and he's not ready to play. 70 snaps you know it's still going to be a situation where you know he's going to have to be platooned there um but he's making great progress and he's a guy that we feel like you know with more time is is only going to get better uh coach in, in regards to harold and and greg and Wit, is there a possibility that all three of them could be on the field at the same time as four three oh sure if four, absolutely three back? Yeah. yeah especially teams that are that are playing you know, a much more – look, and, and you saw it against Nickel State, right, a run-first kind of offense where the quarterback, um, you know, is, is central to the run game. Um, you know, you can see a lot more three linebacker sets. Um, the nickel, as you know, is, has been, you know, uh, you know, part of the, the defense of configuration because there have been so many – you know, spread offenses. And now that we're seeing a lot more tight end oriented in the core, some two tight ends. Uh, you look at Tennessee, for example, everybody talks about Tennessee's offense and it's an outstanding offense, but, you know, they're running a lot of, you know, 12 personnel. And, and you know, you, if you're a nickel against them, uh, you're in trouble. 
Um, so I think you're seeing a lot more three linebacker sets. Now, I think we all know that, you know, the, the coverage variations begin to shrink a little bit. So, you know, from an offensive standpoint, that's why we love 12, you know, with the tight ends that we have. So long story short, um, yes, you're going to see a lot more three linebacker sets because of the offenses that we're seeing. Coach, a couple up over here. Yes. Uh, defensive stats, Brian, really have not been what we thought we would be. Uh, what you'd have uh, sacks, pressures. Uh, how aggressive can you get defensively? And on the flip side, offensively, they seem to be bringing a lot of pressure. What's that going to force uh, you, Joe, and, and, and us to do to get rid of the ball quicker on Saturday? Yeah, you know, I, I guess – you know, if you look at the USC game, we had a lot of balls that were deflected. Our havoc rate was really high. And so we, you know, havoc rate is, is pressures, um, you know, uh, blocked balls, uh, balls on the ground. We had a lot of havoc against them. Nickel State is not a team that you're going to get a lot of those. Uh, they're run first, control the football. Uh, you're trying to get them off the field. So, you know, those are a little bit misleading. Um, you know, this is an offense that is, uh, again, not one that's going to sit in the pocket. Um, they're, they're gonna, the ball's going to come out. They're going to move the quarterback. Um, it's important for us defensively um, to, to really do a great job against the run and limit the explosive plays. If you look at the Kentucky game, it was the explosive plays that really put them in a bad situation, especially early on. You know, they blew a coverage early on. Um, so limit explosive plays, do a great job against the run, get the quarterback down on the ground, and, and handle their tempo as well. I think that's very, very important to us. Um, and then you had a question on the offensive side, I'm sorry. So again, you know, I think we've talked about their two ends, you know, uh, outstanding uh, defensive ends. They, they're, they're, they're elite pass rushers in the SEC, but that's not new to our two tackles. Um, you know, they're, they're veterans in this league. They know that it's going to be a challenge for them. And look, it doesn't come down sometimes just to the two tackles, right? It's, it's the pressures inside. Um, and, and I think, you know, Nuss has done a nice job of, of setting our protections and recognizing it. And, you know, I don't know, um, you know, he's, he's gotten knocked down a couple of times. I don't know if we've given up a sack. And, and he's going to get the ball out of his hands pretty quick. Hey, Coach. With a guy like Dominic McKinley, who you know, has so much physical potential, like how do you manage his development this season? And where do you kind of need to take him? Is it sort of like play it slow? And like just how do you kind of get him to where you need him to go? So he's had a bit of a setback with turf toe, and it's been, it's been fairly significant. You know, he's getting scarring down on that, that joint, which um, is allowing him to do much more. He's on our uh, demo squad right now, and, and he's doing a really good job. He's a young man that we have eye, an eye towards playing this year, um, but we got to get him healthy first. And, you know, there's a lot of things going on in your first year, right? <laughs> he's playing college football. He's going to class. Now he's dealing with an injury for the first time. Uh, but his future is, is bright. But it's going to take a little bit longer to get him there. Um, I, I'd say that, you know, it's probably another week or two to get this toe where, you know, he really can be powerful um, with it. I think after that, we're going to accelerate him as quickly as possible um, and, and see where that takes us. Uh, Coach Jacoby and Gillard was obviously, you know, a leader um, in that defensive tackle room, not only from a stats perspective, but, you know, vocal leader. Um, saw that in fall camp and stuff. How has that position group responded this week? Has anybody kind of stepped up and kind of taken command of that room? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when you look at that group, you know, uh, Gio's a veteran, Paez, even though he's here for the first time. Um, you know, we've, uh, Paris Shand is going to take some snaps in there. He's a veteran and a leader for us. Um, you know, look, I, I think we, we could talk about a lot of different guys in there 
the most important thing is we've got a great leader in Bo Davis. And, you know, he's helping those guys really understand how important their role is. Because we've got some young guys that are going to have to step up and, and, and play substantial um, and meaningful snaps for us. Um, you know, whether it's Sean Washington or Ahmad Bro, um, Jalen Lee, you know, there's a lot of guys that are going to have to play, and they don't have to play 30 snaps. You know, we're talking about 12 to 15 snaps a piece, but be really effective. And a combination of all those guys, and I think Bo has done a really good job of making sure that each one of them knows they're important and um, each one of their snaps uh, has got to be really, really top notch. Uh, Coach, uh, Deshaun Womack's name popped up in the injury report with uh, West Week and a few others. How are they sort of progressing throughout this week? He was moving around today. Um, you know, we'll issue our final report. When does that come? The new SEC rules, when does that come out? Nine minutes before kickoff. Nine, w w you'll know 91 minutes before kickoff because he's, you know, he usually <laughs> tells you guys. Probably going to get fired now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's fine with it. You should see his severance. It's huge. Um, but we'll, we'll have a, he's probably more like a game day decision. Good? I get one. Is that cool? I don't know. After doing that storm chaser thing, I, I'm not really sure <laughs> if I could take you serious about <laughs> sports questions, but I'll, I'll, I'll look the other way. I got demoted. <laughs> um, just with the run game, I know kind of the conversation has been teams have been loading up the box, you know, seven, eight guys in there, so you want to let Nuss use his arm, make plays. How are you kind of approaching it this week in terms of, you know, picking your spots and balancing, you know, the pass and the run when there's opportunities? Yeah, you know, I, I've a answered this question a lot. And, and look, I, l l let me be clear. Th there are times you have to run the ball with extra hats, right? The, guy that the running back gets a scholarship and he's got to make a guy miss here you know sooner or later too so I, I don't want to paint the picture that we're never going to run the box with seven guys but if it's clear that you're going to get man coverage and th they are committed to that then there are better alternatives for us um, but we're, we're gonna we're certainly going to look at um, you know, trying to find a way that we can get the kind of balance where they have to respect everything that we do. Um, and, and, and look, you know, there are some games that, that you just don't need to do that because you, you can exploit matchups. And then there are some, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta run the ball in there regardless. And I just don't wanna paint a picture that, well, we're never gonna run the ball unless the numbers are exactly right. That's, that's not true. Um, but we are going to be tactically smart about what we do. And if we get a tactical advantage relative to those numbers, one way or the other, you know, we're going to lean towards that. Good? All right, thank you. That was my first hurricane. I will say a nor'easter from Boston would be a lot more difficult than that hurricane. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. Sounds good.